Good morning to everyone and welcome to this academic environment. My name is Evelyn Ramirez and I will be guiding you throughout this PhD candidate dissertation. On behalf of the doctoral program in engineering at the Universidad Pedagogica y Tecnológica de Colombia, UPTC Sogamoso, we welcome you to the dissertation of the PhD proposal entitled Methodology for Deploying WSN-based IoT Nodes in Confined Underground Scenarios, presented by student Fabian Medina Becerra under the supervision of professors Eduardo Avendaño Fernández and Jorge Enrique Spindola. This dissertation has been scheduled by the academic board on the doctoral program in engineering. It is led by Professor Herman Antonio Fernandez as academic coordinator of this program, as well as Professor Jorge Enrique Spindola Diaz, who is the head of the Socamoso faculty. We also welcome Professor Cheng Ming Zhao, Xavier Fernando, and Giovanni Serafino as reviewers of Fabian's proposal, as well as the rest of the attendees that are with us via Meet. We suggest you to turn on the captions that are available on the Meet toolbar. And of course, all people that follow this stream via YouTube. Good afternoon, Engineer Fabian. Good, good morning, Engineer Fabian, dear jurors, Chaming Jo, Xavier Fernando, and Giovanni Serafino, and Professors Eduardo Vendaño Fernandez and Jorge Enrique Spindola. Welcome to this event. Now we are going to introduce Engineer Fabian, his advisors, and the evaluation committee. <clears throat> okay, as I already said, today's uh, presentation is called Methodology for Deploying WSM-based IoT nodes in confined underground scenarios. Fabian Andres Medina Becerra holds a bachelor's degree in systems engineering from Universidad de Boyacá and a master's degree in information security from Universidad Oberta de Catalunya. He is a lecturer at UPTC and works with the Systems Engineering School. His current research interests include IoT, IoT security, and network security. Eduardo Vendaño Fernandez, he received a bachelor's degree in electronic engineering from Universidad Pedagogica Tecnológica de Colombia, UPTC, an MS degree in information and communication sciences from Universidad Digital Francisco José de Caldas, and a PhD in electronic engineering from Universidad de Antioquia, where he obtained a cum laude award. He is associate professor at UPTC. Currently, he is the administrative and financial vice principal. His current research interests include digital signal processing and machine learning to mitigate non-Gaussian distortions in digital communications, pattern identification in agriculture and DSP for radar and lighter systems. For Enrique Spindola Diaz, he received the bachelor's degree in systems engineering from Universidad EAN, an MS degree in information and communication sciences from Universidad Distrital Francisco José de Caldas, and the PhD in engineering and space technology from Instituto Nacional de Pesquisas Espaciais Brazil. He is the head of the Sogamosos faculty and also works as full professor at the Universidad Pedagogica Tecnológica de Colombia. His current research interests include mobile telecommunications, ground stations, and satellite communications. Cheng Ming Zhao, he received his PhD in electrical engineering from the Tennessee Technological University in 2008. He is a senior research engineer with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, part of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, under the US Department of Health and Human Services. He has served as a project leader and principal investigator for a number of research projects in the areas of wireless communication and tracking, Internet of Things, and proximity detection. He also serves as a government contract officer representative for NIOSH Broad Agency Announcement Contracts. His research interests lie in the broad fields of communication and tracking IoT and autom automation with application in smart mining. Dr. Zhao holds two U.S. patents in RFID and is the author or co-author of over 60 papers published in peer-reviewed journals or conference proceedings. Dr. Zhao is currently in an associate editor for IEEE Antennas and Propagation magazine. Dr. Xavier Fernando is a professor at Ryerson University, Toronto, Canada. His research interests are signal processing and machine learning for wireless communication. 
He has co-authored over 200 research articles, three books, and holds five patents. He is the director of Ryerson Communications Lab that has received research funding over 3.2 million since 2008. He has an IEEE Communication Society Distinguished Lecturer and delivered over 60 invited talks and keynote presentations. He was the chair of I oh, he was the chair of IEEE. What is going on? He was the chair of IEEE Toronto section and E and IEEE Canada Central Area. He has been in the organizing and steering technical program committees of numerous conference and journals. His work has won 30 awards and prizes so far, including Professional Engineers Ontario Award in 2016, and IEEE Prize in 2009. He received his PhD from the University of Calgary, Canada in 2001 with TR Labs scholarships. Dr. Giovanni Serafino, postdoc researcher in TCIP Institute for Scuola Santana di Pisa. He received the MS degree in telecommunication engineering in 2009 from Universidad di Pisa, Italy, and the PhD degree in emerging digital technologies from the Scuola Superiore Santana of Pisa, Italy in 2013. His early research interests have been in the areas of all optical signal processing, fiber optic transmission systems, and reconfigurable nodes for optical networks. He has been involved in all optical signal processing activities, in particular, 3R all optical regeneration and all optical networking. More recently, he has been studying applications of microwave photonics techniques of radar systems and wireless communications. Currently, he focuses his research activities on radar systems applications, and his interests are mainly focused on optical generation of ultra-stable radio frequency carriers and optical beamforming networks for future 5G wireless signals. Dr. Herman Fernandez holds a bachelor's degree in electronic engineering from the Universidad Autónoma de Colombia. He holds a master's degree in electrical engineering from Universidad de los Andes and in industrial automation from the Universidad Nacional de Colombia. He is also a master in systems and communication networks and doctor cum laude in telecommunication from the Universidad Politécnica de Valencia. His research interests include wireless communication and propagation modeling. His current research is focused on channel measurements and modeling in vehicle to vehicle V2V communications. The methodology for this dissertation consists of three stages. First, engineer Fabian will have 30 minutes to present his proposal. Second, the reviewers participating in this dissertation can ask Fabian questions to confirm that he addresses their suggestions and observations. Later, attendees with a PhD can also take part in this stage. And finally, at the end of the question time, Professor Eduardo Avendaño Fernandez and Jorge Enrique Spindola as advisors of engineer Fabian will have time for a brief feedback. Only the first stage will be streamed via YouTube. Now we invite engineer Fabian to start his presentation. Welcome engineer Fabian and the word is yours. Okay, thank you Evelyn. Okay, uh, uh, Evelyn, can you show my screen? Yes, of course. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good morning, Professor Su, Professor Fernando, and good afternoon, Professor Serafino. Uh, good morning, professors and partners. I am Fayan Andre Medina Becerra, a student of doctoral engineering program at UPTC. Thanks for your time and for attending the presentation of my doctoral proposal entitled Methodology for deployed WSN-based IoT nodes in confined underground scenarios. The agenda for today is as follows. Firstly, uh, I am going to show the context, then uh, the proposal delimitation. After that, the research problem will be presented Next, I'll show the objectives, and to finish, I'll describe the methodology and the contributions.
In much of the Colombian territory, some mineral is exploited, especially for strategic mineral for Colombia. Coal, gold, emeralds, and nickel. The extraction is facilitated because artisanal techniques are used over, or, be, or because it is carried out on their own property or because it's uh, carried out illegally. This is how mining has become one of the economic alternatives in the rural sector in Colombia, which results in the support of a high percentage of families and it constitutes uh, one of the essential industrial lines in the country. Boyacá region, located in the country central part, is characterized by having an agricultural and mining vocation. Boyacá is recognized as the region with the largest reserves of um, metallurgical coal. It is uh, characterized by having the best iron and steel coals in Latin America. Furthermore, it is part of one of the most recognized emerald deposits in Colombia and the world. Boyacá is the second region with the most significant number of mines in the country. Boyacá has several challenges in the face of mining, mainly accidents occur in mines and making the production process more technical. Boyacá is the region with the highest number of mining accidents and fatalities, much due to the lack of systems to monitor mine conditions. The Internet of Things is an integrator of technologies at different levels, network, internet, and application. To focus our work, we have decided to use wireless sensor networks as network te technology. Besides the scenario conditions in which we are going to develop our work, the technologies used in mining the previous work and Gintel Research Group's experience. In fact, one uh, of the most used technologies is in the, in the Internet of Things is the wireless sensor networks, well now as WSN-based IoT. Once the central team was defined, we limited uh, the related topics a state of the art and open issues. Node deployment is placing, placing sensor nodes uh, that fully covered the target uh, area to ensure connectivity to the sync node. The deployment problem can be stated as in what fashion sensor nodes should be deployed to monitor required targets and the data are sent to the destination not efficiently. Commonly, there are three phases of deployment. In the pre-deployment phase, the network is planned and the behavior is simulated. The simulation is uh, carried out in order to check the design made in the planning. Then, the on-site deployment phase, which aims to locate the sensor nodes and evaluate their performance. Finally, the post-deployment phase, in which the network is maintained. In general, the, the node deployment methods in WSN fall into two categories, planet, and random deployment. In planet deployment, the nodes coordinates of inside the field of interest are predetermined uh, before the actual dispersion of the nodes. 
plan deployment is definite uh, as selectively uh, deciding the locations of the sensor nodes to optimi optimize one or more design objectives of the WSN under the constraints of uh, a specific application. Design objectives commonly uh, required are maximizing coverage, minimizing uh, power consumption, minimizing a number of nodes, or achieving a, a, a strong network connectivity. In random deployment, the nodes are dispersed haphazardly in the field of interest without predetermination nodes position. The performance of the wireless sensor network with randomly deployed sensor nodes will be less Coverage can be classified in three types, depending on the area to be followed. Area coverage, point coverage, and barrier coverage. Taking into account the socioeconomic problems of mining in Boyacá and Colombia, the importance of technifying mining work, the need of having methods for the deployment of IoT sensor nodes, which allow to improve coverage and connectivity, and the open issues found. We will focus on three relevant aspects. Underground environments, deployment methodology, and coverage and connectivity uh, metrics, methods. Likewise, underground channel modeling, area coverage, and quality of service will be issues associated with the work we want to do. Working in underground environments carries many risks, include inhalation of harmful cases, fire or explosion risks, drowning and suffocation, and landslides, among others. In addition to risks caused by the size and shape of the mine, we propose to define uh, the research problem from three points of view, social, technical, and knowledge. From the point of view of the social problem, we are faced with accidents that occur in mines. From the point of view of the technical problem, the need for a gas monitoring system. And the, from, of the, um, from the point of view uh, of knowledge, we address the lack of no deployment methodologies for underground environments and methods to guarantee coverage and network connectivity. Unfortunately, Boyacá uh, is the region with the highest number of mining accidents and fatalities in the entire territory. Uh, the two main causes of accidents are landslides and explosions. As can be seen in the slide, in the consolidated number of accidents and fatalities between uh, 25 and 2019, more than 20% happened in Boyacá. So Boyacá is the region with the highest number of injured and dead people because of these uh, accidents. The underground scenario uh, offers unique propagation conditions due to the geological conditions, the volume of the space, rudeness of the walls, electromagnetic uh, properties of the surface, humidity, as well as the presence of obstacles. The mines in the region, Boyacá region, have uh, peculiarities uh, that make them special. 
This is due to the use of artisanal methods of exploitation, non-technical tools and ignorance of regulations associated with the process, but also due to the characteristics of the coal found in the region. Characteristics such as size, uh, shape, slope, rank, roughness, humidity, fixed carbon, and even the electromagnetic properties uh, of um, minerals can be considered variables that affect the behavior of electromagnetic waves inside the mines. In the state of the art review, uh, two main topics were taken into account. Deployment methodologies uh, for WS-based uh, IoT and coverage methods for underground environments. Regarding methodologies, we didn't find deployment methodologies for underground scenarios. We found methodologies uh, or frameworks used for no deployment, none was designed uh, to be applied in confined or underground environments. Some methodologies uh, include propagation models. They consider coverage methods and performance metrics. However, they do not consider the characteristics of the scenario. Uh, neither they have been tested at different frequencies. At this point, we find some open issues that can be uh, addressed uh, using a methodology that allows the planned deployment of sensor nodes, uh, guaranteeing coverage and connectivity uh, in underground scenarios. The figure shows uh, the taxonomy of coverage methods in wireless sensor networks. We can see several possibilities to explore in terms of techniques that have not yet been used. Uh, it is possible to propose a technique uh, that improves coverage and increased connectivity between nodes. It can be combining classical and meta heuristic techniques. Also, there is the possibility of considered coverage redundancy or coverage overlap. Also, uh, our objective is not to propose a model of the underground channel. It is important to know which model best suits uh, conditions of our underground environments. In the table, you can see the most relevant uh, channel models applied in underground environments. Uh, ray tracing and modal methods are two of the most important approach to model channeling in these environments. Uh, the models uh, have been designed for use in various conditions, such as the presence or absence of obstacles, uh, parameters uh, associated uh, with the environment, as well as different frequencies. At this point, our objective is to validate which model is adapted to the conditions of the mines in the region, in the Boyacá region. According to the above, the following research questions are posed. How to improve the coverage and connectivity in wireless sensor networks to monitor explosive cases in confined and or underground scenarios? How will an explosive atmosphere monitoring uh, system contribute to improving safety in mining field? And we propose the following hypothesis. Does the transmission frequency an effect on propagation conditions in underground environments? Does it necessary to perform a proof of concept uh, with conventional models? The three main contributions uh, of our work will be 
First, a methodology for deployment uh, IoT nodes in underground scenarios. Second, an algorithm to improve coverage and connectivity in underground scenarios. And third, the experimental validation for the most relevant underground channel models. The technical solution uh, can be seen in the image uh, in which there is an IoT solution for monitoring explosive cases inside the mines. Uh, a wireless sensor network deployed inside the mine combined uh, with uh, wearables uh, carried by the miners. Device sensing environmental and physiological uh, variables can be uh, remotely monitored from administration offices, mining authorities, and risky personnel. The system will be able to alert in case uh, the levels of the monitored variables are outside the normal levels. The deployment will be uh, carried out using the proposed methodology according to the coverage and connectivity requirements of the user, in addition to the mine's own parameters, shape, electronic properties of the walls, number of nodes, etc. With this data, uh, a first deployment model will be generated. Then, coverage and connectivity uh, will be improved using the algorithm. Later, uh, the path loss will be known and the proposed model will be evaluated uh, using performance metrics. So, to achieve uh, such contributions, we have defined the following uh, general objective. To propose a methodology for deploying nodes, WSN-based IoT, which guarantee coverage and connectivity in confined and or underground environments. To achieve the general objective, we must to analyze analytically model the wireless channel in confined and underground mining environments. To determine uh, experimentally the link quality and performance coverage of the network within the confined underground scenario according to identified metrics. To describe and propose a methodology for the deployment of WSN-based IoT sensor nodes that evaluate the confinement and or a underground scenario based on electromagnetic and geometric param parameters to guarantee coverage and connectivity. By last, to evaluate and validate the proposed deployment methodology in at least one confined and or underground environment under controlled uh, conditions and accepted uh, safety standards. To meet the objectives, the proposed methodology uh, was divided in two four stage. Model analysis, experimental uh, measurement, uh, methodology proposal and validation. The objective of the first stage is to identify a state of the art regarding to the main research topics. In addition to identify and selecting the channel model that best suits uh, our underground environment. In the second stage, the metrics that will be used to measure the performance and the network and the coverage algorithm, algorithm uh, will be identified and uh, defined, as well as the parameters uh, that will be obtained in the measurement campaign. Likewise, a measurement campaign will be uh, carried out. The results of the modeling and the campaign will be analyzed regarding the condition of the scenario, 
characteristics of the mine and the minerals. The coverage algorithm will also be designed. In the third phase, we will uh, generate a met the methodology used uh, based on the results of the previous phases. At this point, the methodology will be combined with the coverage algorithm. We will also uh, propose a design of experiments in order to validate the methodology. In the last phase, an IoT system be implemented for gas monitoring in underground mines. The deployment will be carried out using the proposed methodology. The results of the deployment will be evaluated uh, and the corresponding adjustments will be made. As a cross activity, uh, the results will be presented at scientific events and published in journals. Finally, we present the preliminary results of our work. We are uh, developing uh, a prototype wearable that can be uh, carried by miners and that uh, monitors explosive gases. At the same time, we developed uh, an IoT system uh, to remotely monitor the state of the gases and alert the authorities if necessary. The prototype is in the testing phase. Besides, we have been conducting uh, experiments to characterize uh, uh, different ranks of code. Uh, the, analysis, the analysis includes humidity, ash, uh, fixed carbon, and the ident identification uh, the dielectric constant. Uh, for the identification of the dielectric constant, we are using a novel method in which we create have you identified uh, any specific uh, wireless channel model you are you plan to use in uh, like modeling your wireless sensor network in mines okay. I'm asking about channel models okay Evely, can you, can you help me? Yes, of course. Y as, ¿cómo identificaste el wireless que vas a utilizar en tu proyecto? El, el modelo. Uh -huh. The model. OK. Eh, profesor Fernando, eh, we, we, eh... OK. Señor. Yes, sir. ¿Qué es no, 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 doctor. Eh, no, doctor eh, estamos eh, en la sección de preguntas. La sesión en YouTube ya fue cerrada, pero estamos en este momento solamente aquí en Meet en la sección de preguntas. Okay, déjame explicarle al, al profesor Xavier. Uh, professor Xavier, I'm, we are deeply sorry, but we have uh, some pro some technical problems with the YouTube transmission. So we have to close uh, that transmission again. And again, I'm going to ask you uh, to please repeat the question to Fabian so we can just go on with the question time, okay? Sure. Okay. Professor Manuel, you tell me. Me das, eh, me dices por favor 543, because I have no idea. Okay. On behalf of the doctoral program in engineering and electronics engineering graduate school, we thank everyone who followed this presentation via YouTube. We are very committed to our academic processes and our research oriented towards solving contextual problems. Our doctoral program promotes three fundamental pillars. Research as a route to find solutions to local problems with a global view self-management that encourages the autonomy and self-confidence of our students and networking that promotes collaboration with international community. We hope that you have enjoyed this event and that its content has been meaningful to you. Thank you very much and we hope to see you in the next time.
Ok, 